on Fridays has become one of our favorite family traditions, thanks in large part to my lovely sister-in-law, Jess. When we moved here to North Carolina, um, we lived with them for a couple weeks and she taught me how to make the most delicious pizzas right at home. And we have done it every week since then. So I asked her if she would come and help me make a tutorial to show you guys how to make this pizza at home because it really is so easy once you know a few simple techniques to make it really good. And there's so many different combinations of things that you can make with the pizzas and maybe it'll be a fun tradition at your house too. So we start with um, the Trader Joe's dough. Have you ever used any other kind of dough? I've tried a variety of homemade doughs and I will say that these are by far my favorite. Um, and then what we have going over here in the oven is two pizza stones. So what is the reasoning behind the pizza stones and why we have them where they're at? If you put the two pizza stones in there, the bottom one heats up and it like gives makes the, the whole thing hotter kind of. Does right, it and, and gets like the bottom of the crust cooked better. Um, oh, so okay. it's, it's like the best way to kind of imitate a pizza oven. Like, so okay. you want the top one as close to the top of your oven as you can get. Every oven's going to be a little different. Yeah, you so as high as you as can. As high as you can, and it doesn't really matter where that one is, but I just put it on the bottom rack. Okay. Um, and put them in, and this is actually important, put them in before your oven has been preheated. Put so them in put cold. them in cold, Okay. or else they will probably crack. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, don't put them into a hot oven. Put them in and then turn the oven before. on. Okay, so, good to know. Yeah. And then how long do you typically like to preheat it? Do you get those cooking for a long time? We've got it all the way up to 550. Yeah, as which high is, as your oven will go. As high as the oven will go. 550. And that takes a while. Um, yeah. But you can really let them preheat as long as you want. You can't go too long. You can't go too long. Yeah. You want them as hot as they're gonna get. So I feel like one area where I struggled with at first, and most people probably do, if you're not used to working with pizza crust, is figuring out how to stretch it out. It's very different than other doughs, so it doesn't roll out really easily. So what do you recommend or what's the best way to work with this dough and get it ready to make the pizza? Well, so usually I start by putting out some flour on a clean work surface. Um, and really the most important thing is getting it to room temperature because it okay. won't they won't work with you if it's or too if cold. It's colder. I have done it when it's colder, but it's just a lot harder. So okay. just kind of turn it out here and flip it around. So it's kind of covered with your flour. Because it is a little bit sticky coming out of the bag. Yeah. So do you ever use, you don't use a rolling pin? No. Just do it with your hands. Although I have before, especially if it's colder. Okay. Um, if it's cold, then I will sometimes, but I don't like to. I feel like it's best if it's at room temperature. And then you just kind of like, you know, make it circular. circular. Okay. Although, you know, with You don't have pizza, to have a circular pizza. It doesn't have to be. That's true. Um, but then I'll take it, you know, like this and kind of work it around here. And then I see like this side. Ooh. <laughs> Is it a little more? And I like to not have it completely stretched out right now because okay. if you leave it like this and then you go to get your stone, it'll stretch out as you take Even it to more. the stone. Okay. So if you have it too stretched out, it will It'll break. be too big and then break. And yeah. Okay, so you want or it a little bit, bit less stretched than you want the final product to be. Yeah. Do you worry about, you just leave in air bubbles, don't yeah, worry about those. In, actually, I love the air bubbles. Yeah. So. Okay. It's pretty easy. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. So you don't want to overwork it. You, you don't want to roll really it out. You really don't want to overwork it okay. because then it'll get tough. Okay. Um, so, so just a little bit of stretching, pulling, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. Yep. So mm -hmm. we'll pull now the stone, a stone out of the oven, and then put this on the stone. Okay, so we're going to pull just the top pizza stone out of the oven. And you only bake on the top stone, right? Or one stone at a time. One stone at a time. So that the other stone yeah. is heating and helping cook that pizza. So we have our top stone here. And does this process need to be super fast? Do we need to hurry and get it going? You know what the great thing is, is it doesn't. Um, actually, I like leaving, um, so I'll kind of take the dough 
I like leaving the dough on for a little bit because it will start cooking on the stone. So we're gonna make our first pizza, a pesto pizza. How do you come up with all of your different pizza ideas? Oh, just over the years I've, I don't know, <laughs> collected different kinds of toppings I like. Okay, so we're just gonna do basil, um, mozzarella. I love, I think everyone loves. <laughs> if you've tried the Costco pesto, mm -hmm. it is so good, it is the best. So. Um, do we put this on right now? Do we so put the pesto on? I or? like to salt it first. So oh, okay, yes, yeah, yeah. So I, no matter kind of the pizza, I like to sprinkle a little bit of salt okay. on. And I make sure to especially get the outside because that's gonna be your crust. Okay. So we'll do the pesto. Spread that on. Mm -hmm. So with the cheese, I like to use fresh mozzarella. And this at Trader Joe's, Costco sells a really good fresh mozzarella okay. as well. Um, but I always make sure to dry it off. Okay, because it's got a little water in there. Yeah, with the cheese. and really the drier your cheese is, the better. Okay. Um, good to know. Um, and then I just try to slice it as thin as I can. And okay. actually, if you're having trouble slicing it, a great thing to do is put it in the freezer for just a little ah, bit. Okay. Um, because the colder your cheese is, the more firm it is, it'll slice thinner. And you can freeze this as well. Mm -hmm. I buy these in bulk and freeze them with yep. the pizza dough. So all of this stuff you can have ready to go at any time so that you don't have to make a big grocery run. You can make delicious homemade pizza at any time. Yep. Okay, and we put it in right like this. We're gonna do yes. prosciutto, but you don't put that on until after. Yeah, I like okay. it after. Of so course, that it's not that's cooked. kind of like a preference thing. Yeah, I have done it in and it just makes it crispy. Um, if you like it softer, put it on after. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, put it on before. <laughs> okay, so we got the pizza in. Now, how long do we need to leave it in there? I just kind of watch it. And when you see your crust start to get, you know, brown, like especially the bubbles at the top, then that's what I do, but okay. I like it to be like golden brown kind of all the way through, okay. or else your middle might not be cooked. Yeah, so keep an eye on it, look for a golden brown crust, eight to 10 minutes maybe. Yeah. Start looking Usually. around six to seven minutes and just pull it out. So for the shallot and potato pizza, I caramelize the shallots separately, and I like to kind of do it um, as the other pizzas are cooking, because really the longer you caramelize them, and the better they taste. And that's the great thing, you can kind of be doing other prep while the first pizza's cooking. So we're transferring the pizza to a cutting board, mm -hmm. and because this is our first, first pizza and we're not gonna eat it right away, we're making three more, we're gonna just cover it with tin foil and make the other ones. Do you go right onto this stone, or do you nope. switch? Nope, put it back in the oven and switch up the stones. Okay, so we put, we're gonna put this one on the bottom now, mm -hmm. switch the bottom one to the top. So for this next pizza, we're doing a classic margarita pizza. Mm -hmm. So tell us how you put that together, what ingredients you use. All right, so this one's really simple. We salted our crust already, and I just use for the sauce, San Marzano tomatoes. So what's the difference with San Marzano versus any kind of tomato? They taste completely different. Okay, interesting. <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's a variety of tomato that grows in Italy, and okay. it's like, if you use good San Marzano tomatoes, then you don't have to doctor it up. So you don't use a pizza sauce. You do this no. in place of the pizza sauce. So this is what I do. I usually just get out the sauce and you don't need a lot. And you're not really even putting the actual tomatoes. This is just nope. the sauce that just comes the sauce. in the jar. Okay. Um, and then add like a little bit more salt on top. Okay. And that kind of these aren't salted. No. Nope. And we'll do the same cheese. Yep. So you just slice same it the same time. Sliced. And then once you take it out of the oven, you can put fresh basil leaves on. Oh, okay. So what are we doing for this next pizza? So this one is a hybrid of a panini that my husband and I used to live in Boston and there's a little sandwich place downtown that used to have like a fig jam, cheddar, arugula, and prosciutto panini. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna make a pizza <laughs> inspired by that. And this, this is a little different. 
Um, but that's kind of where the idea for this came from. And so our sauce is fig jam. So you do, you sprinkled it with salt, and then our Do we need mozzarella? Here. Do we do the? Yep. Okay. Then we need mozzarella. We've got the fig jam, the cheese, blackberries, and then do you do the arugula after? We do the arugula and the prosciutto after. Okay. So when the blackberries cook, they become like just super soft and sweet, mm. which is delicious. I kind of like to put it in between the mozzarella because mm. the mozzarella will kind of melt around it, melt around it mm -hmm. on top of it sometimes. And okay, okay, so last pizza is what? No, actually, for you this don't salt one, this one. I, I do salt it, but I wait actually till after the oil. Okay. This is really the only exception. So we start, there's no sauce, but we do truffle oil. And truffle oil is delicious, but potent. So, so you don't want to overdo it. Use sparingly. Okay. <laughs> Just a <laughs> tiny bit. Yeah. Salt it. So, so you we'll do the mozzarella. Do the mozzarella. And these are mini Yukon gold potatoes, mm -hmm. and you parboiled these. Yes. Okay, so you just boil them until like you stick in a fork and it's... And it's like semi-soft. You don't want them too soft or you won't be able to slice them. Okay. And slice them thin enough. I don't like them too thick for this pizza. You want to salt over the top. And I'm doing kosher salt here. And really make sure every potato Have gets some salt. On it. Some salt okay. Because with starches, it's like, it's always surprising to me how much... They, they really, they need the salt. All right, so we've got some finely grated Parmesan. Double cheeses on this pizza. Yeah. All right, so the potato pizza is out and we are just gonna sprinkle on the caramelized shallots. All right, so we're ready to finish off these pizzas. They're all baked. This one's ready to go. We're gonna add our prosciutto now to the blackberry pizza and to our pesto pizza. So you just want to, these come super thinly sliced. So you're just gonna spread it right over the top of the pizza. And then to finish off the blackberry and prosciutto pizza, we're just gonna get some arugula. And we're gonna dress the arugula with some fresh lemon and some kosher salts. Toss that. And then put it right on top of the pizza. So there you have it. We have four beautiful, ready to go, delicious pizzas. I hope those tips and tricks give you some confidence to make pizza at home and try out some different combinations because it will probably become one of your favorite traditions like it is ours. Pizza movie night. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza movie night. <laughs> oh boy, we are stuck to the... Oh. oh. Did it melt? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> okay, we have half of another minute. <laughs> oh, this is getting hot. <laughs>